Hmm? I've been there, man. I was wild. I mean, wild, wild, wild. My sister's here. Stand up, Marilyn. She's in the back. Take a look at her. That's my sister. Hey, hey, hey. She'll tell you. I spent like a year. Didn't wear any shoes. Only wore shorts. Had hair down to the middle of my back. The only thing I had was a beach towel, and I rolled up my, my bong in it. And I hitchhiked to the beach every day. Crazy. Hmm? And then I found myself in Texas in a high school. Crazy, crazy. But there was a young lady by the name of Irene Uresti. And a young man by the name of Rolando Salas. Young people full of the Holy Ghost. And they tell me that God said, go to that high school and find the craziest guy there and pick him out. That happened to be me. <laughs> I was the California boy in Texas. Hmm? In Eagle Pass, Texas. Near Piedras Negras, Covia, Mexico. Right on the border. Hmm? Well, in Texas, where they wear jeans and cowboy hats, you don't walk in there with long hair. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. But they had the guts to come and talk to me. Hmm? And I thought they were crazy, these Christians. Seriously. I remember one time I was getting high. Can I be real? Huh? I was there getting high in my house, watching the Dodger game. I don't know how many years ago. The playoffs, all into it, doing my bong hits. All right, I got my friends there. And all of a sudden, you know, we're having a good time. All of a sudden, the, the truck comes pulling up right in front of my house. I go, what? It's Rolando Salas, teenage guy, full of the Holy Ghost. I said, oh, my God, what is this? What is he doing here? Ah, Ah, I don't know what it was, right? But it was like, hide the weed, man. Put the beer away. I didn't know why I had to hide the weed and put the beer away. He wasn't anything related to me. He wasn't my daddy. He wasn't my mama. But he had the power of the Holy Ghost in his life. It was the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I said, man, God, hide it. Hide. Everybody hides it. We're sitting there like red eyes. Hey, all right, you know. <laughs> I said, just be real quiet. Maybe he won't hear us. He comes to the door. You know. Marty, you in there? Oh, man. He comes like, hey, what's up, bro? He goes, can I come in? And we're like, all right. He goes, what you all doing? I said, ah, oh, nothing, man. We're just watching the Dodgers, man. He goes, all right. Do you mind if I sit down? I said, yeah, go ahead. So he sits down in the midst of all these potheads and druggies and drunks. And, and we're uh, watching the Dodger game. And uh, I think the Dodgers won in a dramatic fashion. Ninth inning. Pah, home run. Ah, place goes crazy. Manager comes running out on the field. Here comes all the, all the team. Ah, we're up on the couch going, ah, that's ah, high-fiving each other, having a great time. And Rolando goes, wow. That's what it's going to be like when Jesus comes back. I said, oh, my God, my God. What is wrong with you? But you know something? It got on the inside of me. I couldn't let it go. He wouldn't quit. He made a difference in his generation. My God. My Lord. My God. My God. My God. Got to ruin everything. <laughs> but something started to happen. I couldn't get away from it. And here I am. Hmm? 32 years later, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. Because a young 16-year-old boy had enough guts filled with the Spirit of God who didn't care what anybody thought, who put me as a target on his list and said, you will be saved. Hallelujah. I love you enough to see your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Somebody say amen. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
The Bible says that when the anointing came on David, in chapter 17, you can read it. You know the story, the classic story, the big giant named Goliath comes down into the valley. He begins to threaten the armies of Israel who are gathered on the hillside up here. And the Philistines are on the hillside over here. And for 40 days and 40 nights, this 13-foot tall freak monstrosity named Goliath, hmm, he comes marching down into the valley and begins to taunt Israel. And say, if there be anybody, let them come down here and fight with me. And let the winner take over the other guy's country. Forty days and forty nights this went on. And no response. Listen to me. No response from the older generation. Hmm? Bunch of soldiers, all dressed up, shields, spears, helmets, greaves, swords. But nobody wanted to fight. Hmm? Every time they saw the giant, oh, he's too big. But about that time, a little 17-year-old boy who just a few weeks earlier had had an entire horn of oil poured on top of him, a type of the Holy Spirit, his father sends him to the battlefield and says, go check out and see how your brothers are doing at the battle. David had just got his license. <laughs> so he took his cart. He drove it to the battlefield. And about the time David gets there, the giant comes down and begins to taunt the armies of Israel. <laughs> and all the soldiers begin to run away. David said, what, what's happening, man? What's going on? And they said, man, that giant down there, he keeps messing with us. But remember this. The anointing had been poured out on David. See, when you have the Holy Spirit of God, hmm, you do crazy things. Huh? <clears throat> there are those who pretend to be warriors, and then there are those who are anointed for battle. Hallelujah! My God, my God, my God! You know... Like those preachers that we see on TV today, the real pretty ones with the polished fingernails, the permed hair, the Armani suits, the one that begs for your money, hmm? sells you miracle water, pieces of the cross for $25. They're the ones that are running away from Goliath today. You want to ask me why God is bypassing the older generation and bringing an anointing upon your generation? Because they refuse to fight. You know how horrible it is in your day. Young person, young man, young lady. You know things that you won't even tell your parents. Because you don't think they can relate. And you know if I'm really that honest, it'll freak them out. If you told them what you really see at school, I can't tell them. can't tell them. But it shouldn't ought to be that way. Hmm? And maybe you feel like you're uncovered and there's no one there to protect you. But that's what the Holy Spirit is all about. If you will leave here tonight and allow the Spirit of God to come on you before we leave, you can walk into any den of the devil full of the power of God, unafraid, unashamed, with your... Sh oh my God, you guys are dead. Dearly beloved, if you allow the Holy Ghost to come upon you, he'll make something very special out of you. 
My God. <laughs>